Hey everybody, welcome to Five for a Change. What I'm doing here today is I'm gonna show you how I built this homemade DIY aircrete gun. Now it's relatively easy to make. All it takes is a little bit of ingenuity, about a hundred bucks. I know there's a lot of people out there saying that it only takes about $30 to make this. That's if you already have the parts. If you don't have parts, or if you have to go get them all almost brand new like I did, it's gonna cost you about 100 bucks. Now I understand most of the time people will show you the full video of how they built it, but this is actually a rather simple build. And so I'm not gonna do that because it takes up a lot of time. I'm gonna show you the finished product, I'm gonna explain to you the pieces that I put in it, and also I'm gonna show you the parts and the tools that I had to use, just like this picture here. The only thing missing is the drill. So let's get into it. All of this is one and one half inch PVC pipe, and I've got the cap on top. It's on an adapter, which is female to male, and the male side is threaded. If you look down into it, this is the pour tube. You'll see the pipe dope inside, which is the purple stuff. That's how you're gonna pour in your mix. Once you've got that, you got about a six inch pour tube and it goes down into the T right there. And then on the back side, you have a five inch piece of PVC that has a cap on the back side. On the front end, you'll have about a 15 inch piece of PVC and that's gonna have a cap on the front side. This right here is what's called a hose barb adapter. This one here is an eighth inch inside diameter times a quarter inch on the actual threads that you put into the tube. Now, when you're putting the adapters in, I suggest you use a step bit in order to be able to drill down. And as you drill down, you're able to make that hole just the right size. And then you can use a tap and die set to be able to tap that and then use a wrench to be able to wrench it in. That's what I did anyways right here to get all of these adapters in. The other reason I used a barbed adapter was because with this vinyl hose that I used, it was able to easily be pushed on and the hose I used here is a quarter inch on the outside diameter with the inside diameter being .170. And you can adjust accordingly, but you want this tube right here coming out from the front to be smaller than the tube that's in the back. On the back side, we use a hose barb also, but this is 3 8 inch in the inside diameter and it's a little bit bigger because what you're gonna be doing is pushing air through the back side of the tube. It's gonna push your mix through the front side of the tube, but also you're gonna be splitting it off with a T, and I'll show you that here in a second. So after a few mistakes and a few tries, I decided to put this valve right here, right before the air hits that mixture. One reason is because the mixture will actually flow back out of that tube and it can go into your air hose or it will also go into the gun and we don't want it to do that. And I've learned this from experience. So the valve allows for you to pour the mixture in but not have the mixture flow out of it until you're ready. We've also got a valve on the front side so that the mixture can be pushed through the smaller tube but not until you want it to. This right here is a 3 8 by 3 8 by 3 8 nylon hose barb, and it is a T connector. And what this barb does is it allows for the air from the air compressor to be split. And I'm gonna show you here real quick the end for the air compressor, because what I did was I went ahead and made an adaptation with a 3 8 nylon hose barb connector. And this is the female adapter for the air compressor. So the male end of the 3 8 barb adapter goes into the female end of the air compressor adapter. Now that we've seen the part that goes to the air compressor, we're gonna go back down to the T and from this end of the T, it goes into the back of the gun. And this is comprised of the one and one half inch PVC tube, along with a one and one half inch PVC cap. On the back side, we have the hose barb adapter, which is the 3 8 one, and it's going to go into the very back. If you look on top there, you'll also see a quarter inch hose barb adapter, and that's going to go on the top. What this allows for this to do is 
have the mixture come in through the top, the air is going to come through the back, and when the air is blowing through, it hits that mixture, and it's going to push it through some steel wool that is actually inside the PVC tube. Also make sure to undo the steel wool before you put it in there, because otherwise it's just going to not work. And it's going to diffuse the mixture that you have of Dawn dish soap and water, and it's going to create foam. As we move down to the end of the gun, I want to let you know that I did not glue this cap on. The reason is because that steel wool in there will rust and it comes out a weird brown color. Also, if that steel wool ends up blocking up that hole, you won't be able to get it out. You'll have to bust open the tube or cut it off and get a new cap. And just to prove to you that it was a good idea, check this blooper out. As you can see with this blooper, what happened was the steel wool got pushed down to the end and it blocked the hole so the water pressure blew out that cap. And that's also another reason I did that was because that acts as a safety valve just in case something in that tube gets plugged. So I strongly suggest not gluing that cap on. Next you see this little piece of PEX tube coming out. What I did was drilled a hole at the end of the cap, just big enough to fit that little PEX tube in and glue it in. And what that does is as that foam expands inside the tube, it's forced out the smaller tube and it creates a nice fluffy foam. So I wanna make sure I talk about the back side of this. This is a quarter inch hose barb and it's got the tube going up and right here we have another valve. This valve is for the front side tube, which you can see is a little bit smaller. It's a quarter inch push to fit shutoff valve. Now these shutoff valves are a little more expensive. The reason I didn't use a shutoff valve like this on the back side was because I couldn't find one, so I had to make my own. Mainly because the back side's tube was bigger and I just couldn't find any of these push on ones, which I would have preferred. But at the same time, if you ever have to adjust your tubing, with this type, you have to cut the tube and you have to go get a whole nother valve. You can't just pull it off like the other one. So there's advantages and disadvantages to both. This is the valve for the front side mix so that the mix doesn't go down into the tube until you're ready. Okay, so now that we've gone over everything and the parts, I wanna show you the way I set it up. The reasoning behind this is because if you just let it sit by itself, it's really awkward and hard to use. And if that top part spills over, a lot of times the fluids will leak out and you'll end up with a soapy mess. Believe me, I've already done this and tried it. So I decided to put it up on a board because this not only gives me the availability to set it up against something and keep it out of the dirt or the, off the ground, but also, the way I've got it tilted forward, it always keeps the mix going towards the front of the actual mix tube. And then it gives me an easier way to be able to set the gun down without worrying about the gun spilling out all over the place because there's always gonna be a little bit of water in the gun part. And so this makes it a lot easier to handle and just the design is simple, but yet effective. The next step is creating the mix, which just consists of Dawn dish soap and water. What I did here was I took a little soft soap container, figure out the four ounces, which was about halfway, poured some Dawn dish soap in it, and then poured it into a gallon of water. And that's how you make your foam. Now I'm not the greatest on ratios, but I think that's close to a 35 to one ratio. When you get your mix put together, make sure not to shake it. Just tilt it back and forth real slowly because you don't want it to create bubbles quite yet. But then you go ahead and just pour it into your pour tube. So from one of the things I learned, I learned not to get quick creep. One of the reasons is because it's got all these rocks in it. So your mix is not gonna be very good, mainly because of all the rocks. It does help it set up quick, but if you have a problem like I did when I showed you that blooper of before where the end cap blew off, then that set me back about 15 minutes. Well, within that 15 minutes, my quick creep had set up. And so when I finally got the foam in there and ready to go, it wouldn't mix very well. Now I'm gonna show you a few of the bricks that I made. Also, I'm gonna show you kind of the foam and the mixture that it ended up making. 
Once I finally got it fixed and back to working, the concrete in the bucket was setting up already. And as you saw previously, I had a really hard time mixing it. But this is kind of what you would see once you get it to work. It's a real light and airy type of foam. And I went ahead and did a previous one before all of this just to be able to show you what it looks like when it comes out. In the next part, I just started experimenting because I really wasn't sure what I was doing past this point. And because the concrete was already setting up, I didn't quite get the foam all the way down to the bottom. And as I was trying to figure out the consistency, I just kept adding a little bit of concrete, a little bit of concrete here and there, which made it into an interesting experiment because as you'll see in the next few clips, I ended up making some forms to be able to create bricks and each individual brick had a different hardness and consistency and then one didn't even really hold together at all. So what I did next was I just took it over and I have four different forms. The consistency from the top all the way to the bottom was completely different. When I got towards the bottom, it was more like actual concrete and the top was real light and fluffy. The first one you see that I'm putting into the form was the real light and fluffy one. And I wasn't sure if I was supposed to pack it or not, but I went ahead and packed it down nice and tight. And I went ahead and added some steel wool to see if that would help with the reinforcement, but it really didn't. So I probably should have waited a little longer than 20 hours for these to set and settle up, but I was getting a little bit anxious. This was the one with the concrete more towards the bottom. It didn't get a whole lot of foam mixed in with it, so therefore it was more concrete than aircrete, and it was definitely a lot more solid and heavy. This was the second one that I had created, and it had more foam in it, and it was a little more towards the top, and I had put steel wool in it to see if I could reinforce it with the steel wool, which worked a little bit, but it also made a weak point in it. Now this one, it just exploded in my hand, which I found interesting because that was some of the concrete oh, about three quarters of the way down in the bucket. It didn't get as much foam in it, but also at the same time, I thought it would be a lot more solid. Or maybe I just didn't pack it into the form right. But as you can see, it just exploded in my hand. This was the first brick that I poured. It was the lightest of them all, and it was also all the aircrete that was on top of the bucket. It was kind of fluffy, and it really didn't feel like concrete at all, which might be because it wasn't mixed right. It didn't hold up with the consistency. I tried to put some steel wool at the bottom, just trying to experiment where the steel wool might add some reinforcement, but it just fell apart in my hands. So the light and fluffy aircrete wasn't the right consistency. This was the second one, and the second one seemed to have been a lot better with the consistency, which was a little further down in the bucket, maybe a quarter of the way down. But it wasn't as light as the first one, but it held together better, and the steel wool might have helped for the reinforcement. I'm not really sure because this is all experimentation at this stage. If I wouldn't have had the problems I had initially with the mixing of the concrete and it setting up early on me, this might have changed a lot of the factors of how it came out. But I tried to do my best to show you guys how this process works and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find the right consistency yourself. Maybe I can make a video for a little bit later down the road showing you a better consistency and maybe we can get this right. And with that, I appreciate you guys watching this video. Come and hang out with us at 5forchange.org where we share our ideas, our videos, and other things that we would like to see a change in the world. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as we'll be doing more videos on how to build stuff like this that will make a change in the world. All right, talk to you later. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you